world records go, this is likely to be one of the noisiest. 600 musicians are attempting to win the title for the number of people drumming all at the same time. 600 drummers will be attempting to play the same beat at the same time in the same room. Hundreds came with their kits to take their place in drumming history. To break the record, more than 533 drummers would have to be counted, a record set in America. Did they do it, Darren? Yes, yes, they did, and forgive me if I shout a little, but I've been doing that for the last couple of hours. 580 people were, were filling the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. Uh, the idea for, the, for doing a world record with a load of drummers originally came from watching YouTube, uh, and I stumbled across a clip um, of an event called Woodstick, the big beat in America. Um, this had 533 drummers all playing simultaneously and I kind of caught it one day and thought, wow, that looks like great fun. Why is no one doing that over here? I kind of started putting this clip onto various you know, forums and websites and things like that. And uh, I posted it on a Facebook page called Drummers of Manchester. Uh, it had 60 members and I thought, hang on, well, if there's 60 guys on there, if they all know 10 drummers like I do, I know 10 drummers, if they can all get 10 drummers together, we could get 600 drummers all in one place. And, you know, is anyone up for it? Uh, one guy got back to me and he got back to me the week I came back off my honeymoon. <laughs> I took this clip and I showed it to a guy I work with. This guy I work with, he thought it was absolutely great. He'd had a bit of experience um, doing conferences and things like that. And he says, let me make a few phone calls. I bet I can sort us out a stage and a PA and a big screen and stuff like that. So Rick walked in and showed me this YouTube footage of 500 odd drummers, I think it was in Seattle, I think, um, drumming and it, it was, one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. And he said, how about we do it over here? I, at first, I honestly thought he was taking the mick, but straight away he replied with, yeah, man, we could do that. Why not? Why not? That'll be a laugh. You know, I've got background in conferencing. You, you know, you know plenty of drummers. Oh, yeah, easy, easy, you know what I mean? And then I started thinking straight away, right, OK, venues and logistics. And we thought, straight away, I thought, yeah, this is doable, this, this is doable. Right, there you go. After we'd seen the YouTube clip and me and Rick had had a little chit chat, we thought we need to start getting interest and seeing who would be. Is it, is it actually worth doing? Are anyone going to be even bothered about it, to be honest? I mean, me and Rick thought it was a great idea, but other people might have just thought, you're just being a pair of idiots, like, leave it alone. So I started ringing around the likes of Rock Radio. They wanted us in straight away. They wanted us in for an interview. They wanted to know when it was going to be, where we were going to have it. And we were like, hang on, well, we just, this ball got moving very quickly. We approached our head of news and said, if we do this world record attempt in Manchester, would it be? Would you be interested? Would you come down and film it? And he was, yeah. If you put 600 drummers into an arena, yeah, we'll come and film it. If you put a thousand people in a field dressed in pink, we will come and film it. So you've got 600 drummers, absolutely. Well, if people are genuinely interested in it, and people are genuinely thinking, this could be a good idea and you could do something quite cool here, it was, Hang on, where do we have it though? Where's big enough to house what we were hoping for of six, seven hundred drummers? So me and Steve, we worked really hard. We were, you know, we went to, uh, we were phoning up, trying to find venues. You know, at one point we were looking at um, some disused uh, air hangers on the side of the M56. <laughs> you know, we were trying to phone the council to see if we could use it. Um, we were trying, you know, the Enormo Dome in Manchester or something like that. You know, we looked at the likes of, you know, the MEN Arena and Manchester Central and stuff like that, and we realised, we started looking at the Manchester Central online and realised now they've got this lovely floor space and it, it just looked perfect. And we were like, mate, that, dude, that looks, that looks it. That's the place. Oh, so, Steve! Yeah. It's too early in the morning for him. Steve! Yo! Come back. What? Checklist of things to do for Stick It To Our enthusiasm. And we're going to go to um, the GMAX today and uh, burn well, them down. Give a ballot if we can get a... A rough idea of a price. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my office. I got my own big screen TV. Which phones work now? 
Basically, I was going to ask you, is there any chance my, me and Macaulay could pop down this afternoon? We went there one lunchtime uh, and had a meeting and said, you know, we want to put on this world record. <laughs> we want to put on this world record attempt in your venue, you know. Do you think you can fit 600 drummers in there? It's massive. And they kind of, you know, laughed at us a bit. And, uh, but, you know, then they realised, you know, we were quite serious about it. Um, and, you know, they showed us round. We kind of measured the place up. And we, we got prices to put it all on. All right, the name of your event is? Stick it to MS. Yeah, so we sat around for a couple of days. After chatting to Manchester Central, we sat around for a couple of days working out costs. We had to work out AV gear. We had to work out catering. They, they'd, give us supply, they'd give us costs on how much staff was going to cost, how much electricity was going to cost. It was ridiculous. It was broken down. And um, you already know how much it was. And uh, that was when I just turned to, <laughs> turned to Rick and just said, look, dude, we need to raise, like, a lot of money here. Brilliant. Put it all on the website. Need a web designer. Do you know a web designer? Who? Is he free? Yeah, he's an eight. Damn the graphics guy. Okay. Dan. The graphics man. Dan! Hello. Welcome to the documentary. Oh, cool. Uh, at the minute, we're just up to uh, oh, no. a newsletter. We're getting quite giddy now. Um, That's not I've just been saying to Rick, the nightmares oh, begin about it, raising that's money because we need that's pounds to get the uh, venue. Um, so we're working on getting a new logo for event. the app. And then the newsletter should be ready for a uh, general release. Hang on a minute. Well, they might not. They might not. We'll have to bleep that. We'll have to bleep that. No, we won't bleep it because if they don't come to us and say they can have, yeah, they can have, could have been a we can have this. thousand pounds to do this <laughs> yeah. job. Did we tell you how much we needed to raise? thousand pounds? No, I haven't yet. Well, I've got no... Once I've got the blurb... Dan's done, Dan has kindly done for us. For all your corporate work. Dan Bowers. Yeah. Printed. Yeah, it's printed. Yeah. Is it coming off now? Yeah. Have you hit print? I have hit print, yeah. <laughs> What's the job number? I'm filming the very first one yeah, coming off. It's history. And, uh, that was when I just turned to, turned to Rick and just said, look, dude, we need to raise, like, a, a lot of money here. We're not putting on Woodstock or something, but all of a sudden we had to realize, rest. And I just turned around to Rick and said, dude, we need a lot of money. You're going to have to find someone to sponsor it. Let's start raising some dollar. And uh, that's where I kind of lost heart, to be fair, if I'm honest with you. I heard the money side of it and just thought, there's no way on earth two lads working full time are going to be able to raise that kind of dollar. We had loads of interest and everyone was quite keen on it, but still, you know, that kind of money is that kind of money and it isn't easy to raise. So I got a bit disheartened by that, to be fair, and took a step back. So at that point, uh, I started uh, with my wife, Karen, going to various drum shows, approaching drum manufacturers, approaching shops to see if they were interested in putting on this, this big event. We were basically going, asking people that we'd never met before, that were obviously were big noises in the industry, and asking them, bottom line, for money. Um, it was really nerve-wracking, but obviously, you know, we had to do it because it was the only way that we could make the event work, as we needed some sort of financial assistance. And I had a few other people uh, contact me saying they were doing similar events, uh, percussion-related, and, you know, they want, wanted to, you know, tie in, uh, make their event part of our event and, you know, we'd help each other out. And so we, we ended up moving the date from initially in April. We moved it to May to coincide with another event. Um, but these eventually people just stopped calling you. You know, it was it was really hard. It was hard to get people to believe that we could actually do this. We knew we could, but it was conveying that to other people. I was getting ready to hire, you know, six badminton courts and sneak a few drummers in the back there just to do something, because I'd told so many people about this event and I just, I really wanted it to happen. Uh, but we was really getting to the point we thought, it's, we just can't do it. The real breakthrough came when I was contacted by a guy called Craig Glover. He had been organising Drumfest for about 10 years and he'd built it up from nothing to, you know, uh, a big show. He knew all the top artists and it was just like, if this guy wants to help me out, he's the right way to go. Ah, Drumfest started out about 11 years ago 
when I had my own business called The Drum Company with my partner Andy and we were sitting in the Rock Cafe in Birmingham and I floated the idea at Andy saying look we should do drum fest, kind of modern drummer that kind of thing, promote the company, we've got the Birmingham School of Music above us, we've got the venue and he turned around to me and said no it will never work. First year we got 300 people in, first one, for a 500 seat venue which we were delighted with and then the following year it grew to 400 and the following year it reached its capacity and after five years we had to move it because we'd grown the venue. After the success of the first five years we moved it to a leisure centre in Birmingham which took capacity up to 1500 and that meant we had more space for the, the the retail stands had more space for the, the artists, we could get bigger PA in and also incorporate things like the screens and make the whole production a lot better. Then after that we moved it to two venues, so we not only did the show in Birmingham, we did the show in Essex as well, moved it from that level to that level. When we hit the 10th year anniversary, we then decided to do four shows, and that was to get to the 10 years, say, right, we've hit that, and we'll, we'll draw a line under it, and then reinvent the show for the following year. Yeah, we, uh, we were looking at moving the venue after uh, Drum Fest and Guitar Fest. We've always had a base in Birmingham, and we've fancied doing the show in Manchester. We'd recently um, got a store in Manchester and it made perfect sense to, to move the whole thing and put the whole show together. So you'd have Guitar Fest on one day and Drum Fest on another day. And while we were in negotiations with the venue, uh, the chap who, at the venue mentioned that there was a chap called Rick who was going to put on a drum show in Manchester and perhaps the two of us should talk. Uh, this would be a world record attempt the most amount of drummers playing at the same time, which I really fancy getting involved with. And uh, purely by us being involved with the Manchester venue, uh, I picked up the phone and suggested that the guy should get Rick to call me. I was going on holiday with my wife towards the end of the year, and just as I was getting on the plane, my phone rang, and it was the, um, a guy called Chris from the GMAX who'd been organising things with us. He'd been, you know, helping us, pointing us towards people and things like that. He said. There's a guy called Craig Glover who organises Drumfest. He's wanting to put on a show in Manchester. I think you two should talk together. Um, from then, from there, I went to a big show in America called the NAM Show and tried to raise money for the Sticker to MS show in Manchester as a standalone event. Because of the economy, every door was shut firm in my face. Meeting after meeting, no money, no money, no money. But I still wanted to do the event. So I called Rick and said, would you mind doing this show in Birmingham? So I've been talking to Craig on the phone for about two months, um, trying to, you know, make get this event off the ground. Um, uh, I know, and we would be speaking on the phone for like an hour every day. Um, and, you know, the day we agreed to join the events together, at that point we'd never met. Absolutely not. There was, there was no contract. In fact, we spent the first two months in the planning and organisation stage just talking on the phone, emailing each other. It was just complete trust. We hadn't met, just two guys from different sides of the country with one goal and we just got ahead and did it. And I remember speaking to Rick saying, we've booked the NIA and he said, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. He trusted me. I trusted him. No contracts, nothing at all. And two months of phone conversations and email, nothing else. So the next thing I know, after me backing out and thinking this ain't happening, and leaving Rick with a, a task of raising thousand pounds or something stupid like that, um, he comes back off his holiday and walks in with this, stay, it's going ahead, I've got a venue, it's good, but I just need 600 drummers. And I was like, what, really? And he was like, yeah, yeah, we just need to drum up some kind of publicity now. So the first thing we did was we posted on a couple of forums, 
uh, drums forums, mikedolbear.com, where drummers go on and talk about drumsticks and, uh, you know, how Keith Moon would have played things. The first thing I did was um, start a forum topic. Wanted 600 drummers. To which we started getting response, you know, people saying, world record attempt, brilliant, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So people started uh, emailing in and we were kind of, they were emailing in and we were sending them a registration form and they were filling the form, paying it, um, sending the details back and, you know, we started having a few people. Like, Great, you know, people want to do it. Um, but we only had about 40. <laughs> we had about 40 to 50 kind of drummers for about a month. Um, but we knew we were going to do a proper press launch uh, as part of MS Awareness Week. But Rick approached me about maybe shooting a promo for the internet and getting some kind of uh, publicity from that. We wanted to do two launches, one in Birmingham and one in Manchester, and get some world famous drummers there to push the event and promote it and make everybody aware of exactly what it was. Uh, Rick and Craig drummed up some support and got some, pardon the pun, drummed up some support and got some quite famous drummers. You know, even I was a bit taken aback by who they got. From the press shoots, it was a competition basically between me and Craig to see who could get the most famous drummer. On the Birmingham side of things, it was easy because we've got a core of drummers that were quite local, quite popular, and it was very easy to say, can you come along and do a press shoot? Now, for Manchester, it was kind of my job to try and attract a few local Manchester drummers, so we were really lucky to get Mike Joyce from the Smiths. Whoa, yes! <laughs> How much? Where's my switch card? Pete Salisbury from the Verve. And on top of that, I invited, you know, all my friends who were drummers, you know, saying we're going to do this press launch, come on down, because they, they were all really raring to go and wanted to, to do this. Oh, it was absolutely fantastic. Don Powell from Slade actually flew in um, all the way from Denmark purely just to do the press shoots. He was absolutely delighted to be involved in it. And uh, he did both, he did the Birmingham one and, and he did the Manchester one. So yeah, another great guy to meet was Carl Brazil, who was a uh, new as a columnist in uh, Rhythm Magazine. Uh, he'd also been playing a lot with James Blunt. Um, but he's a really nice guy, he came down and I needed somebody to, you know, film a demo of what we were going to play on the day. Uh, I wanted a little video clip there so people could watch somebody playing the beat so they knew it was like a nice straightforward beat. This is going to be the beat that hopefully beats the US record. It's a basic uh, four pattern with a single stroke roll in between. Here goes. When we did the Manchester one, it was good. We got the press there, and it was a, a great day. The, the video speaks for itself, it's brilliant. When we got to Birmingham, I don't think Rick or myself expected the amount of press coverage we got on that day. That was phenomenal. That was the icing on the cake. We've got ITV and BBC, probably copying each other. Um, I trotted off with Don Powell and we did the BBC one. And then the ITV one uh, was Carl Brazil with just two of the guys from our store that grabbed their kits, got in the car and went and did it. So we had complete TV coverage from 6 till 6.30. We went from having two or three emails today to having 200 emails a day, which is really when the work kicked in. And then the hits on the website were staggering, fantastic. And it was in about two or three days I saw Rick coming into work, bleary eyed, just like I've been reading emails till all hours in the morning and replying to people. Me and Karen are swamped. It really was, I'm not exaggerating, every night till about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning and then getting up, going to work and doing the same again. I'll be honest with you, I was kind of glad that I'd backed out because that emails and replying stuff. He looked knackered, man. <laughs> Eventually, we had over 800 people apply to take part, but we knew we needed every single one of those people to fill in a registration form and send it back to us. If we didn't have the registration form, 
uh, and the registration fee, we weren't, we couldn't be 100% that they were committing to come. Even the night before of the record attempt, we had the one or two people dropping out and we said, right, no, we need those places filled. So we were there at Drumfest um, with, a, with our computer and our huge binding of, you know, registration forms and things like that. And we were phoning people up the night before saying, can you come down? Do you still want to do it? Bring your registration form, bring your £10, you're in, you're doing it. And right up to the last minute, we were filling places. We are going to beat a world record that was set by the Americans. There's 85,000 sufferers in the UK. There's no cure. I've never seen anything for MS, so to raise its awareness and its profile, great idea. So we were looking for a host. We, we needed a host for the event. And we wanted somebody who was used to standing up in front of a, an audience of people, but also somebody who played the drums. And uh, somebody where I work pointed out to me that uh, John Thompson uh, plays the drums. He attends a lot of drum clinics. Uh, he used to play in bands before he was a comedian. And he was working at uh, the same place. He was working at Granada at the same time. He was appearing on Coronation Street. So I made a few phone calls to, you know, interdepartmental phone calls and uh, managed to get hold of John Thompson. And we told him about the event. And he says, Brilliant, right up my street. I'll do it. Dino John was just great. He was just totally into his drums. I took him down to Birmingham for a press shoot with um, BBC, and you know, I sat there in the car with him, and he, we were just talking drums for hours. It's brilliant. <laughs> Anything we wanted doing press-wise, he was more than happy to get involved with. Um, and on the day, meeting people, signing autographs, and he was just, he was great. Nice. Craig, Karen and I, and Belinda, who was going to help us out uh, with the registrations on the day, uh, we got to the arena at seven in the morning. And everything from Drumfest had been taken out. All the stalls and the big curtain had gone and there was just a big stage left at one end of the arena floor and just a huge space. So you might want to disappear off and get some breakfast or whatever. We don't officially start till one o'clock. Um, obviously, be around as much as you want to until that time, but we won't officially be kicking off till one. So, you know, the, the time the time is yours. All your gear is completely safe. Um, we, we, we'll get a great price on eBay for it, and, and we'll cut you in on, on a share of the profit. So, uh, thank you. Uh, so, you guys are just dropping the drums. Yeah, we're doing this. It's a parody for our own. 
Who's coming down? They're not, they're not coming. It's so great that they knew about it. It's quite interesting to watch everybody. I asked on Friday when we came down, I said, I don't think they're going to come down. Yeah, they're not coming 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 down. Yeah, they're
you know, generally help each other out. And with it being for MS, this is it's brilliant. It's a great yeah. cause. It's a, everybody's affected by it. We we were just saying, weren't we? We were just chatting and saying this. this everybody knows somebody that's affected by MS, and this is a brilliant way of you know getting the cause forward and you know, earning some money. <laughs> <laughs> So you've come down here to drum today? Yeah, we've come down. Well, I lost my mother 15 years ago of MS, and uh, it's quite close to me. And then I saw it actually on Granada Reports, but it was this chap's uh, good lady that noticed it. So got on the computer straight away, and they said, oh, we've not got a place at the minute. And, uh, and then he got back to me, and he said, oh, we've got a place for you finally. And that was it. Here I am. It's quite a venue, so, isn't it? It is. It, it is quite a venue. So when you walk in there, you think, oh, Oh, yeah, it is, it is. I've not been out because I thought it was going to be at the NEC to start with, but you know, but uh, no, it's immense, it is. And like I was saying, there's, there's more, they're coming in every five seconds, aren't they? So oh, it's getting louder and louder. It is, it is. <laughs> so your mum must have been quite young. 32 she was when she passed away. But I was a young carer as well at the time, which weren't really noticed then, and they are noticed now. There's like schemes and things like that for them, which is very good, it's nice to see. It's, it's quite hard being a young nipper and doing your homework and washing the dishes and can you grab hold of the hoover and you're like, no, nope, I don't want to do that. But I bet you but, can iron. But you do, I can iron, yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job on this, but I can iron. But yeah, no, it's hard, it's hard work. So I've, I, my heart goes out to the people there that are doing it today, the young kids and stuff. And it's nice that all this is, is going on really. Why are you here today? Well, for one, it's a good cause, you know, multiple sclerosis. Um, also, to raise profile drummers as well, you know, it's a lot of drummers around the place and they don't really get the credibility that they should, I think. Have you looked inside yet? I have, yes. It's quite a shock, isn't it? It is, there's quite a few kids set up, um, quite a few nice kids, a couple of good players, so uh, it should be a good fun. Everybody had to sign in, they had to sign against their name on that list, which was part of the documentation that went off to Guinness to prove that we'd actually got 600 drummers. Um, they say you learn by experience, and I certainly learned by that experience. I, I mean, I'm aware that it's rather slow the process, and that is something that should we do the event again, it will be much improved, much revamped much, much quicker. What did you think when you walked in here? Amazing. Drum is heaven. Drum is heaven. Yeah, amazing. yeah. I thought I died to heaven. Awesome. Absolutely. It's good feel, man. Good feel. Yeah, good feel. Amazing. Great. Are you all from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All session, all the bit session work. Yeah, session work. Yeah. Oh, hopefully we're going to bring a bit of Latin jazz. You know, yeah, a bit of R&B, a bit of R&B, a, um, a, a bit of a gospel feel as well. Everything. We'll be, everything. We'll be rocking it out as well. So. We're over there in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> What's the reaction so far? Um, I was actually in reserve last minute, and to actually be able to take a part, I've been known it for a week. It's just amazing. It's the best thing I've ever seen to do with drums. I've been to a fair few clinics. When you walked in, what did you think? A lot of noise. We, we thought we were going to be first in, but no. There were a lot of people before us, so it was pretty scary. But it's fantastic.
actually got the, the floor plan through from the NIA and we marked it out. And it was all there, signed and sealed, ready to go. They didn't do it to scale. And we found this out at one o'clock the, the night before. So when we got to, I think it was 570 drummers on the floor, then realised we had to put some on the balcony, which I thought was really good, it looked great. So far. It's probably the single most coolest thing I've ever seen. 600 drummers, same time, brilliant then. Awesome. It's loud. It's very loud, yeah. I've got, got my ear, ear defenders, so take care of the eardrums, yeah. Gotta do it. I think it's cool, as he said. Yeah, it's the hope now, now, it's great. Yeah, it's fantastic, yeah, really enjoying it. Yeah. It's the loudest thing I've ever heard, ever. <laughs> so, where about in Scotland are you from? I'm not from Leicester. You've got a kilt on? Yeah, so? Well, why not? <laughs> Does wearing a kilt help your drumming? But, but of course, keeps ventilation. And there's a lot of scotch in my blood. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can smell it. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> yeah, you've got named international artists setting up their own kits. No drum techs. Just, you know, get my hardware in, set up. Do you want a hand? No, I'm fine. Just get on with it. All right, you just walked in with your gear. Yeah. What's your reaction? It's mind-blowing, isn't it, really? I've never seen anything like it. You haven't heard them yet. No, I mean, they're having a whole lull at the moment. Yeah, well, it's the silence is deafening in itself. I think just a kind of anticipation of just about what we're going to be hearing later on is something pretty special. And I mean, again, ultimately, we'll have to keep on remembering that we're all here for multiple sclerosis. Yeah. And we haven't got the number yet. There's still some more to come. Oh, excellent. Well, we, we saw yeah. people kind of uh, getting oh, lost. We, 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 saw, we passed people <laughs> in, in the car park trying to get in because, of course, it's, uh, it's a bit chaotic at the moment. But, I mean, it's a fantastic amount of... Uh, Players here, and again, you know, for the, all for the right reasons. What do I think of it? Bloody loud. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool, actually, isn't it? It's, uh, it was an awesome sight when I turned up earlier on about know, two hours ago and come through the back door there and uh, seen all these drummers and this, this wall of sound, so to speak. Absolutely fantastic. Pretty cool. And you've got a young drummer. Yes, yeah, so she's going to play a bit now. You're going to play some? No, she's just going to sit down. She's writing in her diary what we've done today. So that's all oh, good excellent. fun, isn't it? Excellent. See? Well, you'll never, you know, it's incredible. I think everyone here has never experienced anything like it. Um, no, not at all. Uh, you know, I was, I was interview, interviewing Mike Joyce, the guy who used to play drums in the Smiths and stuff, and uh, he was the guy who got me on board. And it's, uh, it's pretty jaw-dropping when you walk in, isn't it, you know, when you first come in here. And, uh, yeah. and, and having everybody playing together there, uh, started off with the kind of We Were Rocky kind of thing, and then into, into the beat that we're supposed to play for the real record. It's pretty darn cool. Yeah, I mean, just looking around, it is astonishing. It's beautiful. Well, it's something that I've... I mean, I've always thought drums being such a beautiful kind of tactile instrument, and also the kind of... the, the, the wraps that they have, all the different colours and styles, and I mean, they're just such a beautiful uh, instrument to look at, for a drummer anyway. But it's, uh, I mean, just the... Again, it's just everything's... Everyone's shined everything up. It's all looking very sparkly. And the age group, there's some little kids, there's some quite... Elderly gentleman. Yeah, like myself. Yeah, well, that's all right. I was, I, I'm bringing up the rear guard. It's now one o'clock. One. And they are warming up. Not everyone is playing at the moment, and it is, well, truly desperate. It's awesome.
well. Have you ever been to anything like this before? <laughs> no, this is pure insanity. It's this sort of making, but it's uh, pure insanity. And um, most this sort of making is pure insanity, right? I don't think there's actually one person in the room who actually knows exactly what's going on. But we all know what we're doing it for, and that's all that matters, you know what I mean? And I think the result speaks for itself. Do you know what you're going to play yet? I just played, and I had not a clue what I was doing. <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah. Just, I, I'm, I'm not saying like, I didn't know what to expect. I don't think anyone knew. I walked in this morning. I was blown away. It's quite warm in here, you know, and it's for charity as well, you know. And yeah, on top of the service is free. You know, it's a Monday. Everyone has come down, taking days yeah. off. Why aren't they at work, Fred? Right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of it? What do I think of it? Um, I, I think it's 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 pretty cool. It's, it's definitely a, a, a cool atmosphere. Um, it's a little noisy. <laughs> And I'm a drummer, I'm complaining about it. Is this a first for you? Yeah, yeah. So you're a virgin? Virgin to the world record, yes. Yep. And you think they're gonna do it? Pardon? You think they're gonna make it? I hope so. Yeah. It's looking like we got a lot of a lot of willing participants out there. <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna be able to hear anything out there. Yeah, I know, I know. I had the plugs in and I still can't hear. <laughs> I've got to brought these things in there, that's all I can say. But, uh, what an amazing turn I just parked my car at the back and I could hear, hear all the drums obviously happening. As I walked in, it's quite, quite a sight actually, quite a spectacular sight. You've been organising this for months, haven't you? Well, I wouldn't say I've contributed to the whole thing. And, uh, oh yeah. and um, you know, I'm proud, I'm proud to be a part of it. Being a local Birmingham boy and stuff. All the guys. For months, this has been a date on your calendar. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can only imagine what it'd be like. Is it what you imagine? It's not actually. It's, uh, it's a lot noisier than I thought it would be. It really is. It's ridiculous. I think it's great. I mean, there's so many people since I've walked in that I know. They're all, they're all out there playing their part, you know. It's really, I flew in this morning from Dublin. I played yesterday at uh, Oxygen. When I got up, I was really tired this morning. And this has really woke me up now. <laughs> <laughs> it won't get anyone up. <laughs> it's funny looking at an audience, be like, all with drum kits. Yeah, that's something I've never seen. I'm just saying to Mike Dolbear here that I'm right at the front. I don't know why. But, um, Maybe they've all got all got some eggs ready to <laughs> No, it's gonna be great. It's, gonna, it's an amazing turnout. Uh, what? What do you want? You've got gloves on. I've got to keep warm. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit old now, I've got to keep warm. What do you think of it? It's, it's awesome. It's amazing, isn't it? It's just frightening. It's frightening. I mean, how do you describe it to anyone? I don't think you can. Okay, then it's got the, what, the second coming. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, it's just awesome. It's, a, I mean, it's just amazing. With all the people who agreed to take part in this, something to do with it. I was talking to someone earlier on about this kind of thing. When you think of like all the people, the Guarantee Foundation, it's like Live Aid did it, this is done for the MS, and it's all the music business that comes together to. Yeah. And, it's, and it's fantastic, and it's wonderful. And on a Monday, a lot of people are taking time off work. It's fantastic. I think it's just, I'm just, I'm, I'm in awe. I just, it's just, it's just Astounded, astounded. Have you got airplugs in? I don't, I'm deaf anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no one's gone overboard. I was worried about them, you know, Mr. Four Bass Drum Van Halen signature kit coming in and going right, bringing all this in. No one's gone over the, over the odds. They're all basic kits. Well, there are requirements by the Guinness Book of Records. It has to be a full kit yeah. with some symbols, uh, and uh, we have to have a conductor and we have to have adjudication yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's all official. But yeah, I've never been part of a world record before, but it's very exciting. Pretty hectic. I've just um, I've just come from the Oxygen Festival that we played on Friday night. Over to Holland and played the Bosbot Festival last night, and then flew here and come straight here. So I've had no sleep. I've just shook uh, I've just shook my hangover away. So I'm all right now. I think I'm ready to do this. My uh, drum tech, who's come with me today, um, his auntie suffers with MS and. Um, Fun living criminals, even though we have a bit of a reputation for being party animals, always try and give time for charities because over my career people have been good to us. It's always good to do something back, you know. So it's um, it's an honour, and you know, it's the one place in the world where no one's going to tell any drummer jokes. So it's a good day, I think. You know what I mean? <laughs>
know, all of a sudden everybody was just playing rhythm for, you know, four bars, no film. It's like, oh, it's like, that's wrong. It's not what's written down. I've got to stop. I have to get up and stop it. So I had to get up on my drum stool and walk up to the front of the stage and stop it. And I just looked at Carl and said, Carl, you know what to play, don't you? And he said, yeah. And off he went. And he started and then everybody just followed in. And so, yeah, Carl absolutely led the world record.
is uh, a blue Fiat looks like a Scudo a blue one there BT V16 RSU BT V16 RSU that was brilliant. And, uh, my ears hurt, but uh, that was fantastic. Just listening to all these kids having such great fun. Brilliant. It's amazing. So loud. So good. All the drummers are just amazing. So good. Absolutely incredible. It's like I'm all, it's like a buzz between everyone. It's absolutely amazing. I'm just reading that again. AF1 or AF22. Road to be here. It's absolutely great. Well, how was it for you? It was really good, thank you. It was my daughter who played though, not me. Did she enjoy it? She had a great time, absolutely brilliant time. I couldn't keep time for five minutes. Good job she did it, not me. How was it for you? It was excellent. Day well spent. All in a good course. Only one minor injury. Oh. <laughs> oh. <Aww. laughs> How was it for you? Awesome. Good fun. <laughs> Loud. Loud. We had some good yeah, of fun. Good fun. Very tight though. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And you know, what a fantastic world record and a great opportunity to earn money for multiple cirrhosis. Any blisters? No blisters whatsoever, as old as I am. <laughs> Why didn't you take up playing the flute? It's just not as much fun. No one would have turned up. <laughs> no one would have turned up. Car name and the registration. Did you recognise this car? This day will go down in history. The 13th of July. 2009 and we've taken it back from the Americans it's back in Britain where it should be maybe next year we'll have to have another go at it but what an achievement everyone who attended has played their part in this amazing event now behind me well it's going to take a few hours for the graduate de-rigging is that the technical term it's been brilliant Time. John Thompson's done a great job sort of doing funny shapes <laughs> up there trying to keep everyone in time. I've, but it's, it's, I think you've made, made it rain more than anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can we edit that one please? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> have, have we got a... No, <laughs> no, no, no. no, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> basic, basic beat, because we don't want to, you know, put anybody off. Which is just... Uh... <laughs> well, it's, it's, I don't know, it's great, isn't it? Guitar, this is a guitarist's worst nightmare, isn't it, well, it's, I think it's anybody's worst nightmare, I think. It's, it's... Get, me, get me the ting tings! OK, great. This day will go down in history. The 14th of July, 2009, and the record is... Is it? Put the stick down, move away from the kids! I wish, I reckon I could have made a fortune if I'd have turned up with a box of earplugs, earplugs today. Earplugs, yeah. It... Right. <laughs> Anything you'd like to add? Um, yeah, the new Fun Living Criminals album's out in January. <laughs> Anyone yeah. can't play that? Yeah, Get out. Making a racket. But I've just invested in some of these otherwise. I wish I had. Well, you, you can go and get some there, friend, and I'm sure with it being you, they'll, they'll give you some free oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What? Why can't I do that? Uh, can I just point out I absolutely hate doing this? What was this? What was he questioning you? Hello? It's Elvis. He wants to be part of it. But, um, yes, I mean, I don't think... anything. <laughs> <laughs> Things. Take 50. <laughs> Do it. Not sure about this whole documentary thing. 